Hello, everyone. How's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Underrail, shall we? Well, goodness. We did it. And now it's time for our award tour, our victory lap, as we work on wrapping up the loose ends in this game. So here we are, and I thought the elevator was like over here somewhere, but maybe they said it was in the southwest. Let me see this. Um, <laughs> I could t go back to Harmos Stavros and see what he has to say. I am going to probably do that at some point, but... I don't really want to just, like, deeply aggravate. Well, actually, why not? I'm down here, you know. I was going to say I don't want to just get into a big fight with the Faceless. I don't know if I will, but I'm going to walk this way and be proud of it. I think that any Chortling things that were around will still be around, but I'm not 100% on that. Like, if... If they had already spawned, it seems like the game allows them to kind of be here. But if not, then they're gone? Maybe? I don't know. I just walk around now. I don't even care. Yep. And uh, I can go this way to get to them. To the shortest's down the tunnel. I might have to drill through, but whatever. Okay, we will have to drill through. Fine. That's why I came prepared. Oh, actually, you know, um... Let me save it. I want to see if, if wearing the uh, the armor... Oh, I don't even have the armor. Well, then they're going to be hostile to me. I don't think I can talk to them. I am... Yeah, I'd have to go get the armor. I could probably find some just on some dead person. Might be easier that way. I've already proven myself to them. They know that I'm, like, completely trustworthy over at the Chortest Base Camp because I knew a bunch of their trivia. There's an alternate way to beat Chort where you get one of those Jeeps up and running and you just drive it right into the eye, and it's filled, the entire Jeep is filled with uh, dynamite TNT boxes that you craft, and you jump out the last minute. It's, uh, it's being added to the game. Okay, let's see, here's a dead shortest. Uh, you got any armor on you, dude? Well, you have that, that's reasonable. Um, any other dead shortest got any armor? You got any armor? Looking for armor. Yeah, there it is. Take it. What about you? You got anything good? All right, you got armor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just put that on. And now I look great. I'm going to save it and see if we're good. I am here. I should just walk over. And hopefully they're going to be just really, really thrilled to see me. And I explain to them what's going on. Oh, I don't see them. Did they bail? Yeah, they might be... They might be gone. Well, now we can just loot their... Freely loot their activities? Like, I don't see a single one of them. Is it because I turned on this elevator? No, no, that doesn't look to be the case. It looks to be the case that... Well, let's check. Alright, let's just take all their stuff. Look, if you left, that's on you. Alright? Um, I don't know. I None of these passwords look convincing yet. Let's see if we can find it, though. So we definitely have the key to this. And we go here. 
And their weapons are terrible. Come on. Acid blob pistol. You gotta have better stuff than this. Oh, no wonder they were losing. And chemical bolt. Alright, well, I'll take all your medicine. That's fine. Sure. Now they're all going to come back from like a, a group meeting that they had and just see me rifling through their stuff. It's, it's going to be a bad look, but it's worth it. Lock picking 100. Oh, yeah. You got anything good in here? It's probably a crossbow. Oh, it's actually money. Man, I could buy some jet ski equipment with this. What you got? You've got... Okay, okay, okay. All right, well, whatever. It's better than nothing. Let's see if we can get into the old inner sanctum. Inspect it. Leave. All right, fine. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to go check out the Institute of Chort and see if Iden made it. See if these people retreated there. See if there's anything... that we can learn. All right, got a little cash. Oh, I'll pick them all. Don't think I won't do it. You want me to pick the locks? I got it. I'll get it. I'm just seeing if there's an oddity anywhere in this place. That's no, but that's food. I do love food. A uh, repair kit, some acid, and a hammer in a box. Okay, fine. I'm going to respect that you have that stuff, and I'm going to peace out. Actually, I did see an elevator, didn't I? It was down here? Maybe? And it, was, it just said it had no power. I think that's actually where it is. I just kind of like had it in my mind for some reason that it was back by the faceless. But I think I saw something down here. Whatever. It feels great to just walk around the deep caverns like with impunity at this point. I'm going to get killed by something because I said that. But still, I, I feel better than I could have. And six is not here that I see. I was wondering if like he would pop up or something. I don't see the guy. Maybe he's like... You did your thing. We're done. No, this is how I got in here. This is definitely not the right way. I don't think you can come back up the way that you have gone down to get here. So let me try to remind myself... Uh, is it this way? Yeah, I think if I go down and then into this chamber, I think that's where it is. So it's like the Faceless have packed up and left. The Chordists have packed up and left. No one is here. Did I see, anyway? Now, this is a little bit of a shady area where there's, like, infinite enemies, so I'm going to try to be sneaky. You know what? I don't even need to wear... Um, I'm going to wear this armor instead. I don't care if these things see me. Uh, they didn't. I just walked through all of those Azura dies, by the way. That's sweet. Okay, so here's an elevator. I think it's going to work now. Yeah, it looks, it looks good. I'm going to save it. Oh my. Yep. Can I get out? There's only one way to go and it's up. This... Oh. Whoa. Wait, what was that? 
That was... Was that six? Okay, cool. I do get to talk to him again. A familiar shape materializes before you. You are startled, but as your previous encounter has shown, his presence, no matter how unexpected or intimidating, does not mean danger. Once more, a displaced voice addresses you. Short is no more, and the cube has been returned to the faceless. Um, I was wondering when you'd show up again. Other events await my, or should I say, our participation. That is why I am here. What? I am looking for someone. Someone who pretends to be one of your own kin, but is not. Ah, this is what Rob was talking about. The very first guy that you get your main quest from, Hadrian Tanner, as he calls himself. Just as your lips separate to the sound of... Uh, to sound the most obvious question, you hear the answer precede it. Tanner must die, and few but myself can make sure that occurs. I am a powerful being, and so is he. We are the same kin, yet he conceals it better. The reasons should be obvious. Uh, why must you kill him? He committed a crime. What crime? That does not concern you. Um, so you need me to get to him? No, Tanner is no longer in Southgate Station. He knows I am after him, and if I am correct, he should be on his way to North Underrail. Our events are connected. Yours, Tanner's, mine. I do not know why, but I do know that such is the case. As I saw you being an essential participant in the destruction of Chort, perhaps you are also an actor of similar importance in Tanner's, or in other events. It is an option I would be foolish to disregard. After our conversation comes to an end, I will travel to North Underrail after him. I would recommend you do so, too. All the destruction that emerged from events we have witnessed is the consequence of his actions in one way or another, and his actions are unlikely to deviate from the norm. If you want to prevent similar events from occurring, then North Underrail should be your next destination. You'll be able to find me in a place called Hexagon. Ask for six. Um... I am fine with stopping him. Like, if... I have no reason to distrust Six, and I have every reason to distrust Tanner. I mean, it is interesting that Tanner was running, like, Southgate Station, which seemed to be actually helping people, in a sense, you know, but I don't know if that was all a front just for him to do his operation. But I'm willing to accept that Six is honest and has the best intentions, so I'm going to just go along with this. That could be naive. So I'll say he's a dangerous individual, and if you are right, he better be stopped. I'll go to North Underrail. Good. The faceless blockade is no more, so the railroad should be unobstructed. He stops speaking, his lenses surveying your expression. Ask while you can. All right, so I get to ask some questions. Fantastic. Um, what can you tell me about Tanner? His power is not far from my own, even though because of his deceptive nature, he is reluctant to reveal it. He hid from me over the course of many events under different pseudonyms. Every time I revealed him, he vanished. Why won't he fight you? Has he ever tried? No, he is powerful, but not as much as I am. Are you sure he hasn't found a way to increase his power somehow? He tried, but I do not allow him, as you are able to see. Oh, so maybe the cube was how he was going to increase his power, perhaps? So, you say Tanner is pretending to be one of us. You don't seem to care about concealing your appearance. I come from far away. That is the best answer I can give you. It is the only one you'll be able to understand. As for what I am, the things you will see will be enough of an answer. Are you one of the godmen? I am not sure what that term means. If it is something you heard from Azif, then know that his knowledge is limited, even more so than he thinks. Short referred to you as a high one. What does that mean? It is an archaic term, a distant thought. It does not describe me, but it speaks volumes about this particular manifestation. Far away? Where? You would not understand it, and you do not need this information. Okay, let me ask you something else. Um, what's Tanner's real name? I will not reveal that. You told me yours. Yes. Names hold power. I revealed mine because it was necessary. Revealing Tanner's is not, maybe in some different event. You say your mission was to kill Tanner, yet 
you let him get away so that you can ensure Chort was destroyed. Why? I already told you, it is something I knew was most important. But you don't know why. Why put so much effort into it when you aren't sure? I was sure it needs to be destroyed. I was not sure why. There is a difference. I could not explain these things to you, even if I wanted to. Your language is incomplete. Touché. Now, let's see. I think I asked all of the stuff. I have nothing to ask you. Good, then our conversation is done, Dr. Incompetent. Boy, he's just drinking mushroom brew left and right. Embarrassing me. So, I don't know, but I'm assuming that this whole meet in North Underrail thing is like a prelude to a sequel that never has happened. Like, the, the game will end. There is no North Underrail for me to get to. I mean, I could be wrong. Where am I? I am down here in the caves. In the Oh, I am behind the Rat Hound King lair. Oh, it all comes back to the king. That's so funny. And we got a marked card deck. Well, I've already gotten this oddity too many times. Ooh, but there's a, uh, a, a glyph to attune myself to. All right, let's brew it. Got the final glyph location, I think. Can you imagine if you didn't... There's got to be another way out, right? Like if you didn't have mushroom brew on you? Or the juice, rather? Attune yourself to the rift. All right. We got it. Now we have this final place, which is called... Um... Let's see if I can find it on here. Maybe you can't see it because you're at this location. All right, so let's go talk to the dude. We're just going to bounce around, teleport around, and talk to people. Here he is. Dude raises his eyebrow to greet you. How's it going, man? Um, hey, dude, are you familiar with the name John Dyson? Dude remains silent, staring at an empty brew bottle in his hand. Dr. John Dyson, a biocore scientist, head of psionic research and development at Hollow Earth Deep Caverns. Still silent. Um, are you okay? He lets his head drop even further, almost pressing it onto his empty bottle as his unwashed hair falls over his face like a veil. An instant passes, a tear falls, and quiet sobbing reaches your ear. More tears follow, gathering at the bottom of the bottle and merging into one hole. His sobbing gets louder and louder, until he raises his head and reveals a dude beard and droopy, trembling lips. He wants to speak and give you all, and you give him all the time he needs. A few moments later, he wipes his tears and then... Why is there no more brew in my bottle? Why do horrible things happen to good people? Man, like, man. He drops the empty bottle and rubs his eyes. After reopening them, though, he looks at the bottle, shrugs, picks it up, and drinks all of his collected tears in a single gulp. So, like, what were you saying, man? Are you John Dyson? No, I'm the dude, man. You should, like, pay attention to other people's names. He gets another bottle, opens it, and smiles. Yeah, it's kind of rude, um, man. Wow. So he's created an alter ego, another identity for himself to deal psychologically with the pain of everything he experienced at Biocore, everything he did, all of those people that were frozen that I'm not going to tell him what I did. Let's barter. I'll buy juice from you, buddy. I'll help you get along. Looks like I've got some other quests to do here. Um, so I can return to Southgate Station and talk to the counselors about Tanner. Um, I can tell Vera about the bakers, which I finally figured out about. 
and I still have to learn more about the brutal death of the guy. I mean, this is like the th what the second or third quest I get in the game, and I've never done it. It's so funny. Um, anyway, wow. All right. He's not going to say anything about it. Can you answer some questions? I've already asked him all this. Yeah, he won't say anything more about it. And he says it's rude to press him, so we won't. All right, so let's go to um, Oculus and talk to Azif about some wild stuff that we saw. Yes. Um... Let's see. About the acorn. Um, let's talk about something else. Who were the godmen? Right. No, it doesn't look like I can really talk to him about this yet. Maybe I have to get further in the... Um, in, the in the quest line, you know, the main quest to, uh, to talk to him about what happened. Uh, let's see if... My good buddy Abram has anything to say. Um, no. They don't seem to have any new information yet. Okay. So then let's go... Uh, let's go to the Merchant District. I'm just taking everybody's tips and just hitting people up with information... Let me talk to Alphabet. Let me find that guy. I'm shambling around. You shambling in here? Here he is. Um, why do you carry a human brain with you? That's a cool loot and tail. Um, no, maybe I have to... Yeah, I think I have to get further before I can maybe get some of the final pieces of closure with people because I wasn't able to tell him about the looting opportunities in the deep caverns. All right, so let's see. I kind of want to go to uh, the university, but let's go to Southgate Station and see if, like, this part will do anything for us. I'm going to go ahead and save it just kind of on a new save file, and we're going to call this, like, you know, wrapping up. I don't want to um, finish the game unintentionally. Let's see if the doctor has anything to say. Quentin. Um, never mind. He's got nothing. He's like, I don't want to talk to you. Um, let's see. Let me go to administration. Let's at least try to find Vera. Talk to everybody I can. Yeah, here she is. Um, for the moment you stepped in the room, Vera's eyes were fixed on you. However, you are aware that the worried look is not only due to your lengthy absence. Doctor Incompetent, I'm so glad you're alive. After we heard Protectorate forces were moving toward the Institute of Short and not hearing from you for so long... We became really worried. Um, you didn't seriously think I was going to die, laugh. A sign of being uneasy shoots across her face. She then continues, I'm sure you want to rest, and I wouldn't want to delay it any longer, but something has happened. Tanner disappeared. I know. So the word is already out. Tell me about Tanner's disappearance. He left his office some time ago, and no one has seen him since. No one saw him leave through any of the station's exits, like he vanished. This has never happened before. So many things are happening around South Underrail, and his disappearance worries me. Vera looks at you as if wanting to say something, but that statement seems like it's been replaced by a different one. We still haven't checked his room. Since you're here, I think it's best you do it. Um, no problem, I'll do it. Usually I would approach Gorski with these kind of things, but since he's still in Core City, that leaves you as the one I would trust the most with something this important. What do you want me to do? 
See Ezra, he'll let you into Tanner's room. Keep your eyes open and try to find anything at all which might shed some light on what is going on here. On my way. Good. Meanwhile, I think it's time I assemble the council. Return to me once you and Ezra inspect Tanner's room. Okay. Uh, I got an experience point. Now, can I talk to you about... All right, she wants me to talk to Ezra. Never mind. Um... All right, so Ezra's probably down in his cyber lab, I'm guessing. It's where he likes to hang out. There he is. Ezra looks at you with his one good eye and speaks in his usual calm and even fashion. Have you spoken to Vera? That's why I'm here. I'm ready to go to Tanner's room. Ezra presents the key card. Follow me. All right, here we go. Okay, it's open. There, I will wait here while you inspect Tanner's room. Why won't you help me? I wouldn't want to get in your way. Okay, I'm going to take a look inside and be cautious, just in case. Do you know something I don't? If I did, I would have told you by now. Right, I'm going inside. All right, I'll save it because I don't want to die. Um, there's a light switch. It'll probably explode me if I look at it. There's a desk. Wow, this room is big. Shelves. Look at that screen. Got some repair stuff. I'll take the old health typo. Got a nice big bed. What is this? Picture. You stare at the odd picture in front of you. Its seemingly solid surface is occasionally shifting before your eyes, and soon you begin to wonder if it's solid at all. Touch the picture. As your hand comes closer to touching the picture, Ezra's words of caution pass through your mind. You ignore them. A warm sensation pulses through your fingers as they meet the surface and vanish in it. They feel as if you are pushing them through a vis viscous fluid, and they also feel very distant. Um, we're going in, baby. Push your arm through the picture. Slowly, your arm disappears up to the elbow. The warm sensation now travels all the way to your shoulder and slowly proceeds further, creating a feeling similar to blood flowing back into a numb limb, but more intense. However, after holding this pose for a few more moments, the warmth begins to dissipate, and your arm feels gone. Your mind begins to panic, screaming for the severed limb, and pain becomes excruciating. Go through that picture. Despite the burning urge to pull your arm out, you instead push your whole body through. For a brief moment, it felt like you swam through thick, warm liquid, yet you're clean upon passing through. The pain is gone, and you get to the other side whole. All right. Oh. Look at this. Was this was was it at the bottom of the Institute of Chort? It kind of looks like that. Um, mask fragments. You see fragments of what appears to be a realistic human face mask. Oh, this is where he made his human costume. How disturbing. Judging by its position, this could be a sort of console, but you have no idea how it functions since it has no obvious display or controls. All right. Well, again, we're going to get wrecked. Might as well heal up. Go in. I stepped out. As you step out of the picture, you are startled to see Ezra staring at you. I see you have found something interesting. Um, you wouldn't believe what I just saw there. Maybe I would. I've seen plenty of things during my lifetime. You know, was somebody saying that Ezra might have been a survivor of Biocore? Or was that just, um... Yeah, he looks... He could have been, right? I think we... Did we confirm that? Or is it somebody with a similar name? Wait, do you know about this picture? No, and still calling it a picture seems rather inadequate based on what I've just seen. Tell me, Dr. Incompetent, what was on the other side of this portal? A small room with a stasis cell of some kind. Oh, I didn't really check the cell, did I? I don't think it had an interactive icon, though. I passed my mouse over it. Um, and, two, and some kind of desk. There was a chemical set and a number of different chemicals there, along with what appeared to be mask fragments. Ezra absorbs your words, but the only response you get are a few slow nods. You know something, Ezra? 
The things you describe are familiar to me. Over the years, there were a few instances where I was able to peer into Tanner's mind. Faint shapes of what you described was what I saw. I was quickly expunged, however, in every single one of those instances, so I know nothing of the purpose or meaning of those things. Tanner's disappearance is a mystery to me as it is to you, Dr. Incompetent. Now I believe it is time to share your findings with the rest of the council. All right, let's go see him. As you were describing what you saw in Tanner's room, you could clearly make out expressions of growing astonishment on council members' faces. Is Gorski here? You finish, and with that, the room instantly becomes noiseless, as if empty, until old Jonas speaks. And there it is. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? Weren't you listening, woman? This is the moment. The moment where we can finally sit down and discuss the man. If he is even a man at all who's been a mystery to us all f for these years yet we never dared speak about him it whatever i know what we're all thinking alike here right yes she pauses tanner was a mystery his appearance background or lack thereof and just his presence he stood out so much when i saw him the first time but no one ever spoke about him ever and he was a competent man so i <laughs> well it all comes for full circle he's competent I'm not makes sense. I accepted things as they were. Well, Vera, child, it wasn't only you. I remember when Tanner, when he first came to the station, I had hair and more teeth, and the epithet old was far off from becoming stuck to my name. Tanner, he looked barely different than what he looks now. Ah, he hasn't aged a day, has he? Maybe it's because of that thing you saw in the room of his, Dr. Incompetent. Tanner barely aged. You people might not have noticed it as much as, but I did. I felt the same as Vera and every single soul of his station. Um. And for good reason. Tanner was clearly hiding something from us. And a peek into his room as revealing as it is poses more questions than answers. I don't know, but at least we can now openly discuss him. I do not disagree with anything said here. Our opinions do not differ. However... We now need to focus on the reason or reasons for his disappearance and how it will affect Southgate Station, and Dr. Incompetent, I feel, has more things to reveal to us about him. Dr. Incompetent, you performed quite a few tasks for Tanner recently. Ever since he got here, Tanner's been sending him around. Do you know anything else you feel we should know? Now is the time to talk, Dr. Incompetent. Tell us what you know. So, I could be like mums the word or I could spill the beans I could say the task Tanner gave me were all somehow connected to the mysterious object which was stolen from the faceless causing them to invade Core City and the rest of South Underrail I've learned that the object is a powerful one and Tanner wanted it for himself all this has led me all the way to deep caverns where I've seen it finally get returned to the faceless I'm going to tell him everything I have nothing to hide from these people I think they deserve to know the truth and they do our are you trying to say Tanner was the one responsible for the invasion? This story gets better and better, but what the heck is the object you're talking about? So I could, again, say I don't know what it is. I could say I don't know what it does, but I've seen it. It's a polyhedron made of some unknown material. It had strange markings and what appeared to be sockets of some kind. Or I could give them more info and say it's a power source. I do not know what the faceless are using it for but it's definitely something important if they're willing to invade us for it it's a and then I, i'm just going to give him all the info incredible tanner must have needed that device so badly he was willing to risk an all-out war with the faceless there is however the question of how he was able to steal it from the faceless in the first place again i could lie say i don't know I could say someone must have done it, or I could give him the full info. Someone did it for him. I found Laura Baker in Deep Caverns, and she explained to me that Tanner sent her and Terry to pick up this object from some man. He must have been connected in some way to the theft, if not having done it himself. However, the earthquake prevented the Bakers from returning to SGS, and so did a gang which called itself the Acid Hunters. They killed Terry and wounded Laura and took the item from them. The faceless returned Laura. I forgot to tell you in all the rush. She is resting right now. In any case, you mentioned you went all the way down to the deep caverns? Tell us how it happened. After the acid hunters took it from Laura and Terry, it finally ended up in Cortex Research Facility, from which it was stolen by Chortists. After infiltrating their institute, the faceless attacked 
but the object had already been sent down into deep caverns, so I had no option but to follow it. Better and better. It is better and better. It's an unbelievable story. Would you stop it, Jonas? Hmm, it seems like everyone wanted this object, including the Enigmatic Institute. Why did the Chortis send it to Deep Caverns? What do they have there? Um, they have Chort. What? What is Chort? It's one ugly creature, one giant, disgusting, mutated mass of flesh and slimy tentacles sprouting from it. Everyone is silently exchanging gla uh, glances. I killed it and returned the object to the Faceless. I helped the Faceless fight it. With our forces combined, the creature is dead, and the item's been returned to its owners. Um, the Faceless took care of the creature. I was only an observer. Interesting. Like, options two and three are lies. Now, I don't know if there is a way to get them for option two to actually help you out during that fight. I didn't see that. Maybe I should have gone back to the Faceless and they would have actually helped me. Um, but I didn't, that didn't happen for me. So I'm just going to say I killed it. You got a real pair of mighty boulders between your legs. How do you even walk, son? Fascinating. You've seen amazing things in such a period of time and you live to tell the tale, but this tale prevents more questions than answers and we still don't know who Tanner truly is. Oh, actually, maybe it's not Ezra who was the BioCore guy, but the, the dude who was, uh, um, who is in Oculus. The guy who I meet in junkyard for the quests um not ahab whatever that guy's name was uh, maybe it was him and not ezra because ezra is not saying anything the tale presents more questions than answers and we still don't know who tanner truly is what he was going to do with the faceless device and where he is now there's a thing or two i've learned that, that might shed some light on who tanner really is do tell us i met this humanoid creature which calls himself rom umbra We've met even before Deep Caverns, and it seems we were both involved in all these important events regarding the faceless object. Now, this is, like, questionable telling them about Six, because Six is, like, trying to remain in the background, and I might be betraying his trust, but, you know, I'm gonna tell them. Can you describe it? He is lean, tall, about as tall as Tanner, and he has a prosthetic arm and a leg. He wears a metallic-looking mask instead of eyes. He has four lenses. One other striking feature is that he has six digits on each of his hands. As tall as Tanner, Mask, he's a powerful individual. Even capable of things like teleportation. The technology he wields is far more advanced than anything we've ever seen. Yeah, go on. He and Tanner seem to be of the same species from what I understand. Ram Umbra wants me to assassinate him and he seems to have been trying to find him for a long time. Now that he's finally discovered him, Tanner slipped away and fled to North Underrail. So what you're trying to say is Tanner has been posing as a human in order to hide from a whatever the hell it is assassin and now bolted as soon as this rhyme ember sniffed him out. Everything makes sense now. The faceless object, Tanner's appearance, that stasis cell in his room, his departure. I love how Ezra is just like, well, this makes perfect sense. I see what you mean. We still don't know what he was going to do with that gizmo, but I can bet the five hairs on my head it's related to him not wanting to get zapped by his fellow kinsmen. Gentlemen, I think a long meeting is ahead of us. Thank you for everything, Dr. Incompetent. The rest of us have a long discussion and head. You, on the other hand, might want to get some rest, some good rest. You've done more than enough. Afterward, you should come to my office. I will. All right. So I rested in my room, back to my room with my awesome laptop. It looks like I got another experience point. I have no prayer of leveling up again, um, but that was really fun. I, I enjoyed like getting the to tell people what happened, um, and hearing it all out loud is just kind of hysterical. So I think this is a good place to end the first wrap-up episode. I'm going to do more of this because there seems to be a lot to do, and I, I think I need to progress in the main quest. Um before I can talk to some other people in the game and have dialogue options appear regarding the deep caverns and short, etc. But look, we actually have a check mark next to the bakers for the first time ever. I am feeling fantastic. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'll check you next time when we get even more wrap-up and conclusion on this amazing game. Take care.